नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल क्यूबिड एजुकेशनल सर्विसेस वी आर सॉल्विंग द फिजिक्स एम सी क्यूज फ्रॉम एस आर एप्टेड यू टेस्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड एट ऑफ दम एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द नाइन्थ वन विच इज़ बेस्ड ऑन मैकेनिक्स कंसिडर अ सॉलिड रॉड ऑफ मास एम एंड यूनिफॉर्म डेंसिटी रेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट अ वर्टिकल वॉल एंड अ हॉरिजोंटल फ्लोर एच शोर इन द फिगर द कोफिशेंट्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शन ऑफ द रॉड with the wall and with the floor are given to be mu1 and mu2 respectively gravity is acting downwards with acceleration due to gravity g what would be the value of the inclination angle alpha so that the rod stays in equilibrium so the angle alpha is this angle this is the stick or the rod and it is in contact with two surfaces the floor where the coefficient of friction is mu2 and the wall vertical wall where the coefficient of friction is mu so this is a fairly simple problem if you understand uh, what equilibrium means for a two dimensional system so we are going to now uh, draw the figure uh, separately and uh, show the forces let's do it well okay uh, the options are all tan inverse of something well so we also know that now it is going to be a trigonometry problem after some steps after few steps so uh, let us take the figure here this is the figure and now let us show all the forces acting on the body or let's draw the free body diagram in short let us draw the free body diagram i'm going to show all the forces in red color so weight will be acting downwards mg now wherever there is there is a physical contact With between two surfaces or two bodies, there will be normal reactions, and here uh, we are considering the free body diagram of the rod. Okay, so I will have a normal reaction R two here, and I will have a normal reaction R one here. Correct. Now, see, uh, in which direction is this uh, particular rod going to slide? Okay, the direction of impending motion. okay what we call impending motion impending motion means the frictional resistance is about to get over and the body is begin to is about to begin to slide okay so that is called impending motion now we know that friction will always oppose the motion correct so if the impending motion is to the right can visualize this right so in that case the frictional forces will be opposing the impending motion so if this end is moving towards the right this end is going to slide downwards so the frictional force here will be upwards mu1 r now in this whole system how many unknowns are there in this uh, system there are three unknowns okay which three unknowns uh, reactions r1 and r2 and the angle alpha which we want to find correct the length of the rod is also an unknown but that is not of much concern to us as we shall see later in the solution that uh, it is independent of l okay so let us assume that the rod is a uh, rod has length l okay let us first uh, bring in the first equilibrium equation that is summation fx equal to 0 and uh, let us call this as origin this as our x axis and this as our y axis so sum of or rather the vector sum of all forces along the x direction should be zero so how many uh, forces are acting vertically uh, horizontally r1 is acting to the right towards right r2 is acting to the left so r1 minus mu2 r2 equal to zero that is our first equation of equilibrium now let us consider the vertical balance summation fy equal to zero mu1 r1 is acting upwards okay mu1 r1 is acting upwards weight is acting downwards so minus mg and uh, r2 is acting again upwards okay these are fundamental okay but we now know that <coughs> because the rod has significant uh, length we also cannot ignore the moment equation it is not a point object anymore so let us choose a convenient point okay so that we can take a moment or we can take moments of all the forces about that point so i'm going to take the moments about the point alpha okay or, or okay well this point basically this point okay and it has to be zero because the rod is in equilibrium mu2 r2 and r2 these forces their lines of action pass through that point 
in fact they act at that moment so they will not be responsible for any moment about the point of action correct what about mg now please note the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the weight of the rod and the point about which we are taking the moment is actually l by 2 cos alpha because we have assumed okay let me show the distances in blue color now we have assumed that the length is l so from this point to this point the length is l okay so how much will this length be this length will be l by 2 cos alpha correct because if the total length is l half of it will be l by 2 the opposite side will be sin alpha and the adjacent side will be cos alpha okay so let us now go start with the moment of the force uh, moment of the weight rather so mg uh, l by 2 cos alpha now uh, we are going to consider the anti clockwise moments to be positive okay in the absence of all other forces if we take mg's moment then the rotation is going to be anti clockwise so let us take it positive now mu1 r1 is uh, anti parallel to the weight okay so its moment will be negative negative mu1 r1 negative mu1 r1 and now we want this distance okay perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point and that will be l cos alpha now, not l by 2 cos alpha okay so mu1 r1 l cos alpha what about r1 for r1 the perpendicular distance is this okay so it has to be l sin alpha correct so minus r1 l sin alpha equal to 0 correct so we now have all three equations we have uh, r1 minus mu2 r2 equal to 0 we have mu1 r1 minus mg plus r2 equal to 0 and this final equation so we have to now uh, eliminate uh, r1 and r2 first thing is let us eliminate r2 okay uh, by substituting it uh, by substituting for r2 from the first equation now what is the first equation going to give us the first equation uh, is, is is saying r1 is equal to mu2 r2 so r2 must be r1 upon mu2 correct r2 has to be r1 upon mu2 now you substitute this r2 here okay if we substitute this expression for r2 here what will we get therefore mu1 r1 minus mg uh, pl uh, plus r2 is r1 by mu2 equal to 0 so okay r1 into bracket mu1 plus 1 upon mu2 let us send mg to this side okay therefore how much will r1 be look here r1 into mu1 mu2 plus 1 equal to mg so that mu1 mu2 plus 1 will go in the denominator okay and uh, in this denominator on lhs now we have mu2 so that will go here now this r1 here okay this r1 which is mu2 mg upon mu1 mu2 plus 1 let that be substituted here okay let that be substituted uh, there so now we are one step away from our solution also let me cancel the length because that is uh, present in every term okay so we have mg by 2 cos alpha minus mu1 what is r1 now mu2 mg upon mu1 mu2 plus 1 okay don't forget cos alpha minus what is r1 now r1 is mu2 mg upon mu1 mu2 plus 1 don't forget sin alpha okay don't forget sin alpha equal to 0 now dividing by cos alpha because after all we want tan alpha right dividing by cos alpha and now we can also cancel mg terms because we have expressed everything in terms of weight so mg cancels mg cancels mg cancels okay so if we divide by cos alpha first term will be half second term will be mu1 mu2 upon mu1 mu2 plus 1 
third term it will actually be tan alpha right it will be tan alpha so what i'm do doing is i'm sending this term to rhs so it will become positive and it will be mu2 upon mu1 mu2 plus 1 into tan alpha okay therefore how much will tan alpha be now let's take the lcm here mu1 mu2 plus 1 minus 2 mu1 mu2 upon 2 into bracket mu1 mu2 plus 1 and now this term it will go to lhs so that uh, we write mu1 mu2 plus 1 in the numerator and mu2 in the denominator okay mu1 mu2 plus 1 mu1 mu2 plus 1 gets cancelled therefore tan alpha is equal to mu1 mu2 minus 2 mu1 mu2 so that will be 1 minus mu1 mu2 upon 2 mu2 therefore alpha is tan inverse of 1 minus mu1 mu2 upon 2 mu2 okay so this result is telling us that the angle alpha for equilibrium is independent of the mass of the rod it is independent also of the length of the rod of course we, we have given we have been given that the rod is uniformly uh, dense okay but do we have that option do we have that option let us see now these are the four options uh, 2 mu2 in the denominator 1 minus mu2 in the numerator that is option d hence the correct option to ninth question is d uh, see remember in equilibrium problems you have to first recognize the unknowns in the system okay <clears throat> because once you do that all you have to do is just play with the equations the three equations will always be there with you okay which three sum of uh, if they are under equilibrium vector sum of all horizontal forces is zero or all vertical forces is zero or their corresponding components and you can take the moment of them about any particular point and take it to zero and also don't forget to consider the sense of rotation due to those uh, moments okay you can change your convention in this problem we have taken anti-clockwise positive clockwise negative but you can also take clockwise to be positive and in that case anti-clockwise will become negative otherwise a fairly simple question in the next video we shall solve question number 3